Oh my goodness, would you look at that? A successful charge at Electrify America. So happy, I'm so proud. This is one of my first sessions at EA where my very first attempt at my very first dispenser that I tried actually worked. Hello and welcome to yet another Gone Electric video. I am Evan and you catch me once again at my local Electrify America station, hoping to successfully charge up for tomorrow. While I charge, we're gonna talk about some things that you wanna ask yourself when you're thinking about switching from a gas car to an EV. How do you know you're ready for an EV? This is how. So as I wait for my car to charge here at Electrify America, which by the way, this is one of my first uh, sessions at EA where my very first attempt at my very first dispenser that I tried actually worked. So I am satisfied for that. If you want a rundown of some of the issues that I've had lately with Electrify America and some other chargers, you can check out some of the videos that I've posted below in the description. Um, you will get annoyed and frustrated as I was when I was making those. Um, so th this video is basically about the things you need to consider when you've made the decision to switch to an EV. The first thing that I want to talk about is upfront cost. EVs are not cheap. The upfront cost of an EV is on average uh, pretty high. There's only a handful of EVs under 30,000 and uh, you know there, there's a couple that are kind of in the mid 30s. The things that come to mind are like Bolt EUV, um, Kona Electric, I think the Mini Electric uh, maybe in the mid 30s. But there are drawbacks of those EVs that are more on the cheap end, which is charge speed, cargo volume, um, and then range, just overall range. And then of course, you know, if you're, you've got to be okay with the style, you know, if style is important to you, in my opinion, some of the cheaper EVs aren't stylistically like to my liking. If you're looking for an EV with a decent range, that's, you know, 250 miles or higher, one that stylistically is a little bit more modern and like cool looking, Again, this is just my opinion. And you're looking for one that has a faster charging speed and I'll, I'll say over a hundred kilowatts uh, as a max charging speed, meaning that it's something you could, you know, uh, reliably take on a road trip because it charges at a, a decently fast speed. You're talking about spending, you know, over 40 grand. And I'm not gonna get into tax rebates because those are quite complicated right now. Though there is a chance that you could buy an EV that's over 40 grand and the tax rebate may take it lower for you. If you believe that you are ready to spend the money that's required to take the EV off the lot, then that's great. Time to move on. Let's take a little break ski to check on the charging. Let's see what the screen says. We are at a state of charge of 53%, charging at 75 kilowatts. We like that. The second thing to talk about is home charging. If you have the ability to home charge your EV, then the decision to get an EV is a lot, lot easier. And the reason for that is really simple. Public charging is just not reliable in its current state. The current marketplace that we have for charge point network operators has given us just a sea of unreliable chargers. Um, and as I look to my right, I can actually see the charger next to me out of order, which has been out of order for now two months. So that's a problem. If you have home charging on an everyday basis, you don't have to deal with this lack of reliability, the stress that comes with that, the hour, the sometimes hours, literally hours of troubleshooting that goes into trying to get a charge started at your public DC fast charger. So home charging is a, a, a really big plus if you can get it. If you do have the ability to charge at home, I think the, the question that you need to ask yourself is, can I uh, survive on level one charging, which gives you about two miles per hour of charge? Or do you need to level up, literally level up to level two charging, which can get you around 20 miles per hour. Level one charging charges this car in a bit less than four days from zero to 100%. Uh, level two charging, I can get this car from zero to 100% in about 10 hours. So that's the difference that, that uh, level two makes in home charging versus just level one. The third thing to ask yourselves when you're trying to decide whether to switch to an EV is if you don't have the ability to home charge. Do you like to road trip? Do you, do you take long trips in general? Um, because if you do, there is a lot of stress involved in finding a charging dispenser at a public DC fast charging station that does work. Which brings me to the fourth thing, which is if you don't have home charging 
and you like to road trip and you often take long trips, how okay are you with dealing with the time, the energy, the stress involved in troubleshooting when your charging dispenser doesn't work? This is something that's going to happen to you in the current state of public charging, especially with DC fast chargers. You're gonna have to spend a lot of time and energy troubleshooting to try to get your charge to activate. Uh, Emily and I have spent literally hours sometimes at, uh, at uh, public DC fast chargers on the phone with customer service trying to get chargers to work. Uh, the other thing that you'll have to, get, to have to deal with and you'll have to be okay with dealing with is apps that do not show uh, availability accurately. They might show four out of six dispensers are, are available only to pull up and only one is available or none, which has happened to us. So if you're willing to deal with the troubleshooting, the time, the energy that goes into troubleshooting and the frustration, then, you know, EVs are still a cool thing to own, honestly. And from my own perspective, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment, but I almost enjoy sometimes the stress and the drama and the push and pull of not knowing whether the station that I'm pulling in is gonna actually have available chargers. I mean, then the sort of battle of, you know, trying to get a charge to start. It's kind of a puzzle to me. I, again, maybe I'm just crazy. That's very possible, um, but it's, it's okay for me. I've been able to deal with it. My parents, a different story. I wanna mention the last thing here. If you can afford the upfront cost of an EV, if you don't have home charging, you can't get home charging, and you also don't want to have to deal with the stress and time involved troubleshooting uh, public DC fast chargers when they don't work, uh, then the last question that you have to ask yourself is, do you want to buy a Tesla? Uh, my friends who own Teslas, they don't have this issue. I have friends who don't have home charging who own Teslas, and they don't have uh, the issue of unreliable public DC fast chargers. Theirs work, and when they don't work, Tesla has a system where their techs go out really quickly. They respond very quickly and get things fixed. Now, there are questions you have to ask yourself with Tesla, um, but that's content for a later video. If you found anything in this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. And um, let's check this charge. We might be done. Oh my goodness, would you look at that? A successful charge at Electrify America. So happy, I'm so proud. <laughs>